Hi, I'm Ron Jackson with Acoustic Guitar Magazine, and today we're going to talk about bass lines and chords and how you walk them through chords. Now, to get a, a good glimpse about this is to check out people like Django Reinhardt and Freddie Green, who actually started this kind of sound um, back, back in the day, and uh, I would suggest listen to the recordings and um, listen to these people play that. Uh, we have some suggestions here on the website, and uh, and on the you know in the article here. Now, um, you know one th one of the ways I got to, into this kind of playing was listening to Joe Pass when I was in college at Berkeley. Now he this is this guy was a master of walking bass lines and chords, and um, he used to be able to play that on his classical guitar on his Gibson 175, and it was ama absolutely amazing to hear this guy play the guitar making it sound like a whole band. Now, um, you know, when I get into this uh, weekly workout fairly quickly now, I just want to talk about a couple of things before you start with these lessons. First, you should be very mindful of the chord shapes that we're going to be using. The chord shapes we're going to be using are basically three note voicings with the root, flat seven, and third, sometimes inverted depending on what chord you're doing, okay? and. Um, to memorize these shapes because they're very common when you're walking a bass line and also when you're comping um, in the swing style of the manouche swing style in jazz okay so I mean the first one of the voices we're gonna be using is a G7 like this with the sixth string root C7 on the fifth string root with these shapes and the minor seventh D minor seven like this and A minor 7, the D minor 7 was on the 5th string root, the A minor 7 is on the 6th string root, and they're movable, all these shapes, so we're going to be transposing them, we're going to be using a, a blues in the key of G, okay, a jazz blues in the key of G, so re remember to uh, memorize this progression in all keys, especially if you're, you know, you really want to, want to get into jazz comping and swing comping like that, okay, and walking bass lines. So um, I suggest practicing with the metronome. I have my trusty Dr. Beat here, DB90, and I have it set to um, 50. Um, and I, I want you guys to practice with the metronome beat set as two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you're actually feeling the hi-hat pulse of the song. So you're going to actually match your beats and these lessons um, to the two and four to practice. I mean, you, you can practice with the metronome and without the metronome, okay? So let's get started with the weekly lessons here. This is week one of your weekly workout with walking bass lines for the guitar. So the most important thing right now is to remember these chord shapes that I actually wrote out in this G blues, this G jazz blues, okay? Uh, so uh, try to remember the chord progression and also um, practice this exercise with the metronome using all downstrokes, um, accenting the two and four, okay? But the, and also, very important, if you can try to memorize these fingerings. Now, later on when you get really good at walking bass lines, you're just going to use every available finger that you can in, you know, in some un un unconventional ways to actually play these, um, you know, these bass lines with a chord on top, okay? But right, to, right now, I'm having you learn a specific fingering just so you get used to being able to, rem to remembering these shapes and being, a being able to play this chord progression, okay? So, I suggest remembering these fingerings as best as possible, you know? And uh, I, I even have a hard time remembering this because, you know, I'm so used to just being able to play with any finger, but I, I want to give you something constructive to memorize so you can incorporate the bass line later in this exercise. So we're going to actually use this chord shape with a metronome, but you have to be able to hit the chord like this very lightly. 
like this. You see that? What I'm actually doing is hitting all three notes at the same time, but not too hard. The goal is not to hit it too hard, okay? You're going to go through this whole exercise and, and do the same fingering with the metronome, okay? And with the same fingering and accent the two and four. So if I put the metronome on, one, two, three, four. You have to count in between the click of the metronome to get the two and four on the right place. So I would go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's what I'm actually doing. I want to actually play through the whole exercise for you right now so you can see what it sounds like and you can practice this at home. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. going to take that same exercise and actually separate the top two notes. This is the G7 chord and which is the third and seventh of the top two notes. On the G7 it would be a B for the third and the F for the flat seven we call it and this is the root, the three note voicing we've been working on the whole time. And we're going to actually play a separate bass line with the G note on the bottom like this. Now I suggest using a pick to play the bass notes and then using your, your ring and middle fingers to play the third and seventh on these chords. I mean, there's ways of actually going and and picking every note like that too, strumming the first note on the first beat, okay? But I suggest using hybrid picking, we call it. And we play through this exercise using the same fingerings, using that bass note on the bottom. The most important thing is to accent the bass note on the second and fourth beats like we were doing before. And also making it sound like two separate parts, like, like a bass player and a, and a guitar player playing together or a bass and a keyboard player. For example so let's um, play through this exercise right now make sure you play through this and you make sure the bass is connected legato and you know and try to make it sound like two parts I'm gonna put the metronome on again so you get an idea how to do with the metronome but I suggest without a metronome to practicing one two one two three four And uh, we get a little bit more complicated with the walking bass lines now. Before we were playing the simplest bass line, which is playing quarter notes on every beat, just the root. Now, I actually wrote a real bass line out, okay? And we're going to put the bass line on top of those two note voicings. And the two note voicing will be played just only for two beats. Because it's pretty hard to hold them for four beats through the whole measure, even... Um, you know, even myself who's, who's been doing this for a long time has a hard time doing that, okay? Now, I suggest learning the bass line separately and then playing the two note shape separately. So I would do this exercise like this first. Watch this. One, two, three, four.
So that's actually the bass line you're going to be playing with the two note voicing, the third and seventh on top. So now I would practice the two note voicing separately too as well. So it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now we're actually going to put both the bass line and the chords together. Okay. Now this gets tricky. So you have to like separate your brain into two parts, the bass and the chords. So I suggest practicing this really slow in the beginning until you get the independence of your right hand and your left hand playing the bass lines and the chords on top. Okay. So. I'm going to do this without the metronome like I've been doing the whole time right now, which is actually much slower than the 50, uh, 50 beats per minute half note that we were using before, which is 100 uh, beats per minute actually in quarter notes, okay? So here's what it sounds like. I'm going to go real slow here. One, two, three, four. So that's week three. So now this is week four of our bass lines with chords uh, for the weekly workout. Now we're going to put the same bass line we've been working on for the last few weeks and put a syncopated rhythm with the third and seventh on top, which is actually a Charleston rhythm, we call it, from that song, the Charleston. Charleston, 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 that song. But we're going to do it much slower. We're going to use that bass line that we had before and connect it with that rhythm on top, which gets tricky because you, you have to actually use your pick to play the bass line and play that rhythm on top like this. It's like one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. It gets tricky to even count it out, actually. So what I'm actually doing is, um, with my right hand, I'm playing that bass note constantly. Then I have to hit that upbeat of the two, which is the end of two, in between the bass notes. And I have to stop it with my... Uh, depending on which fingers I'm using for the third and seventh, lift up so it actually stops the note. There's also a way of muting it with your right hand too. But it's much harder. It's easier to actually use your left hand to mute it and stop the strings, okay? So I would suggest practicing that rhythm all the way through with a metronome like this. Three and four and one and two. So I'm going to actually put it one and two and I would practice that rhythm separately at on the metronome setting at 40 okay and then then put the bass line on top after so you could practice this in quarter notes for now for example
just on one bass note so you get used to it. <coughs> then you're going to actually put the bass line that we had before, we use the bass line that we had before and put that on the bottom of the syncopated rhythms of the chords on top, okay? Let me do that without a metronome. Let's do this real slow. So, that's week number four. Once you actually do this, you're going to sound like a full band when you get up to speed. Enjoy practicing these exercises, and here's something for you. <laughs>